is up everybody sun diesel here we're going to be tying up an elk hair hopper we use quite a bit of elk hair a little bit of hackle and some synthetic materials to make this hopper it's a little bit durable and uh, fun to tie so we're going to learn some uh, new tricks of the trade and uh, there's going to be a few other videos that you can reference to because i didn't want this to be forever long so let's go ahead and get started we got an arex uh, fw570 this is a size 8 um, typically I fish these in fours to tens and so we'll go ahead and <clears throat> grab a hook out and uh, get it in the vise and we'll give it a little spring test to make sure it's uh, in there solid because we're going to be cranking down some some elk hair here so we want to make sure that's solid so we're going to be using a Semperfly this is their wax thread in an 8 aught. I'm just using white um, you could use a bunch of different colors we'll end up coloring this orange in the end um, and we'll go ahead and get started with our thread right here behind the uh, the hook eye and I'm gonna come all the way back down to about the hook point I'm not gonna run all the way down um, we're gonna attach this uh, hopper tail that we've already made about right here so that there's a little bit of room for the hook to dangle down and uh, so here's our uh, our hopper tail this is something that we made previously in a in a different video and I'll put a little link up here that you can click on uh, right about like here that you can click on to go to this video on how to make this but we'll go ahead and we'll cut this tag end off here and we will place it here pinching it on how I want it and I'll go ahead and do some nice securing wraps right there keeping it on top of the shank tying down as much elk care as we can and of course that uh, thread that's binding all this together now um, I started putting a little bit of super glue on these uh, hopper tails just for durability and it's basically creating like a hollow foam tail that's just going to float for days. Um, you know each hair is hollow and so you can see that's pretty secure. You know I give it a little wiggle test just to make sure it's solid and then we'll put a little bit of super glue on there just to make sure that it's going to be durable. So there's a little bit of movement to that. So. Um, that helps out and um, par particularly why I tie it in separate and so I'll just put a little bit of this super glue in kind of bonding all that together and we'll we'll let that uh, dry here for a minute and uh, that way when you go to tie in the next step a little bit of hackle um, we don't get it all over so we're using some whiting farms this is some of their new freshwater um, hackles streamer hackle it's got a, a really nice uh, grizzly olive color to it and I'm just going to pull one off a little bit down from the neck, uh, sizing it so that uh, we're basically creating a little bit of bugginess to this, a little bit of uh, extra body and stuff that's going to uh, make uh, more realistic properties on top of the water. So I'm going to just palmer this. I'm not too concerned about perfect wraps. I just want these going back. We're going to wrap over it just a little bit. And we're going to tie in, um, you know, a couple. I usually do two to four feathers depending on what size I'm doing of course and and also where what uh, feather I selected and we'll go ahead and uh, tie this off now and it looks like I might need one more and so we're just going to secure that uh, hackle stem and then I will go ahead and pull all these fibers back trying not to pinch my finger or my thumb on that hook point this is a sharp hook and I just want all these going back and then we'll trim out our little stem right here now I'm gonna do one more just because I, I basically want to advance from where we tied in at the hook point to about the halfway point and that's where we'll attach our legs so I grabbed another feather that from about the same spot and I'll go ahead and tie that in by the tip and uh, we'll go ahead and just pull everything back I guess I could cut out that tip but I'll just palmer it it's just gonna add to the bugginess and so we'll just go ahead and palmer this up to about where our thread is trying to just create a nice uh, uh, body here and we'll uh, go ahead and tie that off like I said the goal is to be halfway between the hook point and the hook eye and so I'll go ahead and pull as many fibers as I can back um, trying to make sure we keep that uh, front end as clean as possible and that looks pretty secure I'll go ahead and snip out that stem and then I will snip out this underbody here because we want this sitting flush that is uh hackle fibers will help to stabilize it side to side a little bit but we're just mainly going for the bugginess there and uh, creating more of a body and i like how this is looking so 
Next step is we're going to be tying in the legs. Now there's a couple different ways you can do these legs. This is a, a double knotted um, silicone leg um, that I, I usually really like because this wobbles and bounces. You also can um, make your own pheasant tail legs. Um, you can purchase these already made. I'll put another link. There's another video right here that you can reference to on how to make these. And so we'll go ahead and tie this in and I want them to look like a hopper and so I'm going to have it angling up um, towards the the top of that hackle and kind of tying it in on my side and you can play around with it get it adjusted but uh, make sure you get it how you want it because once we finish tying this in it's going to kind of go the way we tie it in so I really want to focus on getting it uh, um, not coming out to the side but more going back following that uh, that uh, hopper body and then we will be good to go so I like where that one is now and then we will go ahead and tie in on the other side um, these these legs will get splayed in just a little bit when we tie in the next uh, hackle and so if they're sticking out just a tad bit that's totally okay and that one went in pretty well, I thought I had it pretty smooth but uh, just play around with them by pulling and twisting as you uh, um, have those thread wraps you know if it breaks just tie in another leg because that means it wasn't uh, durable enough at this point so uh, let's tie in I like how those are let's tie in the hackle now and so we'll just tie in one more from a similar spot on that cape and I'll tie that in by the tip and we'll go ahead and cut this out I'm just running our scissors right along here and snip it and then we'll go ahead and palmer it and whoops pulled a little bit too hard there um, that happens so just make sure you um, I'm just going to tie this in by the little tip that I had in there before and we'll be good to go put a little bit maybe a couple more tighter wraps on there and trim out that stem and we'll just start palmering that right over where we tied in our legs and we'll advance it about that length of the thread you only want to go about from we were at the half the distance between the hook point and the, the hook eye and now I want to basically go a third of that forward and I'll explain why here in a minute because we're gonna pull everything back and do some wraps to kind of splay those legs out to the side and make sure that our hackle is um, uh, going the way we want it I'm gonna trim all these out so it doesn't get in my way for the next step I'll trim out the stem and these legs uh, coming off the front can be a little bit of a nuisance and so if you got a way of securing it I just use a little hair clip here I'm just gonna pull them back and uh, secure it here to my vise and we'll grab this hair clip and basically just attach it right there with a little bit of pressure and that way they're out of my way and we'll do some more wraps just to make sure I got had a couple hackle fibers that I wanted to get back and then we'll advance with about half an eye length between um, uh, a gap we're gonna be tying in the head now this is El Care from Nature Spirit uh, it's select cow on the uh, the natural and we'll start with that I'm gonna get a little bit of a clump and the ratio is I do a lighter color on the belly and a darker color on top and I do half of the lighter so we're gonna be grabbing two times the amount of the olive and so whatever you pinch now just remember when you do the olive it'll be double and we'll go ahead and just uh, clean that off we'll go ahead and throw it in our hair stacker and we'll go ahead and tap 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 on our our little vice bench here and make sure those tips are aligned I'll go ahead and pull it out of the hair stacker and now I need to switch hands so I just kinda pinch it and roll it and they don't need to be perfectly aligned we're gonna be trimming these and if you're a OCD tire you may not like that way that I just did it but I wanna make sure these are clumped together on the bottom so I'll do a loose wrap around that elk hair just to make sure that it, it's gonna be clumped together because I don't want the natural going up into the green it's going to happen, but we'll go ahead and advance this, um, these wraps going backwards just a little bit, just to kind of make sure they're nice and secure and um, create a little bit of a spot here that we'll be able to um, secure in the, the green. And I'm going to check to make sure that I've, I've tied forward enough. You want, like I said, not too much of a gap, um, and then we'll trim out these butt ends. Uh, because basically we're going to be creating a bullet head by pulling these back and securing them with some thread wraps and so you want it to be pretty close to that that hook eye but you don't want it to be so tight that you when you pull them back you're going to be tearing hairs out so 
To keep that uh, lighter color on the belly, I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue right here. That way it's not going to walk around when, on me when I'm doing the, uh, the olive. And so, like I said, you want to grab about double the length or double the size of clump of elk hair for the top. And I grab maybe two and a half times because this is a little bit of a shorter um, hair on this olive. And so I'm going to probably lose a, a few of them. And so we'll just go ahead and pinch it and clean this out with our, our hair comb here just to get that under fur out and make sure that uh, we don't really want a ton of that on there. And then we'll go ahead and when we switch hands, this is a pretty big clump. And so I'm probably going to lose some of them. So we're just going to... Um, Put these on and I want the olive elk hair here to be a little bit longer than the uh, natural is because we're going to leave um, this, uh, it will all make sense later, but we're going to leave the olive splaying back but I'll be trimming the, the natural on the belly. So just go ahead and switch hands and if you lose a few hairs that's fine, just make sure you got about double the, the amount of hairs now. And so I'll go ahead and just line that up right here on the top and I'll, splay, I'll place it so they're a little bit longer. I'll come up and over and then I'll kind of on my second wrap crank down on that nice and secure. And we want to avoid having those natural fibers kind of coming up, but it's inevitable. And so I don't think the fish care, but um, there we go. So we've tied in the olive now and now we're going to trim out those butts. And you could actually, on some of the times I've tied this, I've actually left those butt ends coming back to kind of create that uh, uh, more realistic. But I, I don't think it's been a better hookup ratio, and so I end up just uh, trimming them out um, for that purpose. And it just makes it for a, ne a nice cleaner head on the, the, bullet, uh, the bullet head, and so I just trim those out. So just be careful at this point not to cut your hackle fibers and also avoid at all costs your, your legs. So we'll just go ahead and wrap a couple wraps through here. I'm going to pull my legs out of that, and I want my legs kind of coming outwards and a little bit forward. So this is the point that we can manipulate those just with some thread wraps through those, through those butt ends. And I'll go ahead and pull this one up and over, and this one kind of got trapped in all those elk hair. So I'll pinch those out in front, and then I'll do some nice uh, wraps right here just trying to get those to go out and uh, come to each side the way I want them. And you're not going to see this because we're going to be tying the, uh, the bullet head over these um, wraps. So once you have that where it is, I kind of judge where my legs are to be the placement of the bullet head. And I just start uh, separating the lighter from the olive. I kind of pr pull them back, use my thumb to kind of splay them around. And then we'll do a couple wraps just over the olive. And if you're more skilled than me, you can do both of them at the same time. But what I do is I just do those two wraps and then rotate my vise and so then I can just really focus on um, getting all those back and getting them trapped in the place that I want them. And you can see how I'm grabbing that in a tighter group and then I can adjust this by kind of just wiggling this with my thumb. And I think I've got a little bit of a separation of a gap there but this looks like it will catch fish. So um, really do some securing wraps on that bullet head. Um, and then we got our legs. We'll trim them to be about the same length as the uh, between the, the the foot and the the joint on the rear. And then if you got any stray fibers, go ahead and just get rid of those at this point. And now we'll just sharpie this up, and I'll do a little bit of orange here. Uh, you could do yellow. You could uh, do black. Uh, that's that's personal preference. I just have a lot of confidence in orange. So. I'm just going to try and cover up all those thread wraps, create a little bit of a, it's not necessarily a hot spot on this, but potentially uh, something that might attract the, the fish to come up and take a bite. And then here is the real fun part. We're going to trim that bottom section of the bullet head, the natural, just so that we got a nice flat, even um, uh, belly here. Um, similar to how a hopper would be and then we're going to basically grab some of this uh, Semperfly uh, uh, no tack UV resin and I'm just going to turn it upside down put a generous amount here because this is going to hold everything together and create a nice uh, durable solid fly bullet heads tend to be um, 
uh, I wouldn't say fragile, but a little bit more delicate in my experience. And so we've got a solid fly here. So go ahead, tie some up, have some fun, learn something new, and hopefully they pierce some lips for you.